Okay, so uh, first off, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for taking their time to attend our webinar today. Uh, Oracle BI Publisher Jumpstart for JD Edwards Reporting. And uh, my name is Adam Krieger. I'm the president and founder of Preferred Strategies. Um, I'll be walking through today's webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post those in the uh, control panel um, of the GoToMeeting. So there should be a Q&A panel there. We'll tackle those at the end. So I don't hesitate to, to enter those. And um, other than that, um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, another thing to note, if the GoToMeeting control panels is taking a part of your screen, you should be able to minimize that. There should, I think, a little white arrow and a red box might narrow that down to a little tiny tab that you can move to the side of your screen. Um, so the agenda for today's session, just starting with a, a few PowerPoint slides, lay some foundation of what we're going to cover. And then we'll spend some, uh, some time doing a live demonstration um, together. So, um, you know, I'll start with the preferred strategies overview, kind of get into some of the typical J.D. Edwards uh, data model complexities of why you may be on the line here, or why as a J.D. Edwards customer uh, reporting uh, tends to be an issue. And then we'll talk about the BI Publisher Enterprise or Standalone, which is really what we're going to do our demo on today walk through the steps and then our uh, jumpstart package for that. Um, then we'll get into the live demonstration showing everything against uh, sample JD Edwards data using our jumpstart package. Uh, and then we'll come back and have a few slides to talk about the comparison and contrast of uh, BI Publisher standalone or enterprise versus the one view reporting. Um, so we'll kind of cover that uh, after the live demo. And then we'll look at questions. So. Uh, overview of preferred strategies, you know, we've been around since 2002, focusing primarily on J.D. Edwards uh, as the, the ERP, uh, but we only really work with the reporting and business intelligence software. So we, um, that's kind of our, our niche, our specialty is, is really, you know, uh, reporting and BI as it relates to... the. Um, uh, again, we focus just around you know reporting business intelligence for JD Edwards uh, as the back end. The uh, the three primary softwares that we work with are uh, Oracle, uh, BI, and BI Publisher that we're going to show today. Microsoft Power Pivot um, and and other Microsoft uh, BI reporting software, and as well as Business Objects and Crystal Reports. Um, so we do have other webinars for those. We'll, we'll have a slide at the end, kind of uh, what days those are if you're interested there. Um, everything we're showing today is, is kind of a real-time reporting. Um, that's one thing against all, all these softwares that we do is, is real-time. Um, we have Jumpstarts where we've actually taken the knowledge, uh, the domain knowledge of JDE and built a, a Jumpstart for each of these different software solutions for JD Edwards. Um, however, some customers do want to go down the data warehouse path, um, and so we do actually support that as well with prepackaged data warehousing content um, as well. So we do services, uh, implementation services from a consulting and training perspective, um, and we do you know, on-site training against your JDE data using the jumpstarts that we provide, and we're partners of, of Oracle, Microsoft, and SAP Business Objects. So what makes report writing complex uh, for JD Edwards customers? First off, in the, when you're using third-party tools um, and to connect to the data, there's, there's thousands of JDE tables. So a lot of, of the users who you want to build reports or that want to build their own reports may not be exposed to which of those thousands of tables are needed for which reports. Uh, and not only are is identifying which tables you need, but the cryptic naming conventions. So F0006 is the name of the business unit master. Uh, then the fields might be something like a cryptic name GBOBJ for an object account. The dates are stored in Julian format. Amounts and units stored without decimals. So you have to, to make sure you calculate the right decimal conversion, um, getting time-based metrics out of the system. So in the finance side, month to date, quarter to date, year to date, inception to date, actuals, budgets, variance, amounts, units, um, not only just financials, but pretty much all modules. You know, getting those time-based calculations do not exist in the data. You have to actually build that with the reporting tools and the layers and semantic layers that are delivered with various reporting tools, and, and that's something that, that has to be done. So it's, it's um, difficult if you don't already have that created. And then user-defined codes and 
fields, some, some data, even though the common fields across different modules of JDA were not always the same data. So, for instance, the subledger might be storing, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the value in, in, you know, the description might be in a numeric value in one table as a, as, a, as a text value in another. And so even though it's the same value or same number in system, it's, it's not stored the same data type. So you kind of have to figure out how to, to relate the different modules together in a way that, um, that will bring uh, accurate results. So really when it comes to BI Publisher, and that's really what today's webinar is, is about, um, there's really kind of three ways, you know, enterprise or standalone, which is what we're going to do our session on today. This is the, uh, the license that you get from Oracle uh, if you go against the nat natural schema of J.D. Edwards where you'll see, you know, we're going to be logging in over the web and, and pretty much doing everything from um, the BI Publisher web, web interface. Uh, one view reporting is the new um, solution from Oracle for you know, E1 customers that that um, you know want to do reporting right from within the JDA words menus, and we'll talk a little more about that at the end. And then the embedded. So historically, customers may have have replaced some forms programs with doing purchase orders and and invoices and things with uh, the BI Publisher with a, a desktop plugin to build the formats, and then in essence, it's a an automated output from within the JDA words. It's, it's referred to as an embedded, where it's it's actually integrated within the JDE process. So, so we're not really. This session is not about building forms and those types of reports. It's it's more about using BI Publisher for an operational financial reporting, more as an ad hoc report writing tool, as well as a, a nicely formatted, uh, professionally formatted report writing tool as well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, we're, we're not going to do any live demo of OneView reporting. However, we will be talking about OneView reporting and doing um, pointing out some of the differences between the standalone and OneView reporting. So when we actually get to the, the live demo, you know, there's some key steps of, of building out enterprise, uh, be a publisher enterprise reports. And these are kind of, you know, we summarize these, you know, first, you know, JDBC connectivity. That's the way that we're actually building reports is, is via JDBC. And that's kind of a one-time setup. So it's typically, you know, you work with someone in IT to get the connection to the data set up properly. Um, and then creating data models. Excuse me. So then um, the, the creating the, the data models is uh, potentially something where, you know, we actually are delivering these and we'll talk about our jump start. But um, without that, it would be somebody probably in IT helping get those the foundation of those built. And then after that, once you have some data models created where it's, it's identifying, you know, the relationships and, and the, the values that you need, then end users pretty much can, can build reports. And we're going to do that together. So you'll see how easy it is to build a new report from an existing data model. Um, and then basically you, you build a report, you create the report over the web, and then it's kind of the, the blanket of the report, and then you select and define different layouts of the report. And at that point, uh, you can publish a report and view it and run it and, and schedule it and so forth. So... Um, we're going to go ahead and, and walk through all that in, a, in the live session. What our jumpstart really entails is, you know, it's got a few different layers. So the data layer is where we've identified, and, and what we do is, is we've, by the different modules of JD Edwards, we've, we've identified the, the various relationships and, and what tables are required and, and what, you know, and data that needs to be restructured um, to make it usable for reporting. So we've kind of created these this suite of, of, of views. So these are kind of our big quick launch you know, database views that, that sit right on the data um, that do all these translations to make the data usable. And then within that, we take and we built out BI publisher models that are pointed to those views and then some sample reports on top of those models. So you'll notice here on the right-hand side of the screen, we also have, uh, and we're doing a power pivot session on, on Thursday. And, um, I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. But the um, you know we also the same foundation of the views support the power pivot solution as well so and that's, that's kind of in a nutshell um, you know what what do the views do again if you look on the left hand side here the example let's say the the count balance file in JDA where it's F0902 you know with all the the short column names and this it stores different ledger type for actuals and budgets and then you've got a balance forward and different monthly bucket values but to get those, you know, those calculated objects um, is something that the, the reporting tool does, and that's what we're actually doing that in the data model layer is we're actually creating those time-based measures. But 
we're actually at the at the data level itself. We're we're actually providing uh, a naming convention like you see on the right, where we're relating different tables. So we're going out there and grabbing the applicable applicable information from like the business unit master, the company contents file, the account master to bring in the uh, the object account description and the the account descriptions. Uh, we're also kind of creating a new dimensionality here by period. So um, we're actually able to then slice and dice and, and, and create those calculations much easier with a, a period in, as a part of the dimension rather than just year and having to calculate different buckets. So it's kind of a little bit probably behind the scenes uh, details here, um, but this is an example of the, kind of the type of stuff that, that we're doing behind the scenes. And then within the BI Publisher over the web interface, again, we're kind of creating these data models, which is the starting point, relating the applicable information together with our views. Um, and then we've kind of built out, again, some of these sample reports that we'll demonstrate today um, as part of the session. So uh, we do actually have a, a data sheet and a catalog if you want to kind of get a sense of the different modules and, and content that we have. Um, so I think you'll be prompted a survey when you, when you log off this session. Uh, when you do that, feel free. I think there's an option there, a uh, question. If you want a copy of those, um, we'll go ahead and, and provide and send those to you. So I think at this point we're going to kind of jump over and, and kind of do some live demonstration, and then we'll come back to a few slides afterwards to, um, to review the, <clears throat> the BI Publisher standalone or enterprise versus one view reporting. But for the live demo, uh, we'll start with, um, actually I might just show you a, a spreadsheet just to kind of give you a flavor of the sense of, uh, of the views, and, and then we'll kind of dive in uh, on the BI Publisher side. We'll start looking at a financial report kind of show you uh, like a reporting package that will include P&Ls and balance sheets and drill down and all of that. And then we'll show you, um, you know, another interactive view of, of looking at maybe some sales data. And then we'll kind of build that same similar interactive report, maybe something like open purchase order. Uh, and the functionality applies to all modules. It's just we'll, we'll show you though on those, those few examples there. We can show you how to kind of schedule the report. Um, and then the... Um, you know, we'll actually open up and, and kind of take a look at a data model and kind of walk you through what you know, we're going to start when we build the report off a data model that already exists, but then afterwards we'll kind of go in and, and build a, a new data model, open up a data model and kind of show you what the steps are to, to get that working. So go ahead and screens here. So this is actually just a kind of a, <clears throat> a suite of our views here. And it's kind of a catalog, so you can see here the different JD Edwards modules that we support, um, and then within each of the modules, we got a list of the different views, and this you know got different types of views that we provide. Some data model views; these are the ones that are more complex, where we're actually creating several relationships across different tables within the views. We've got you know views on top of individual JD tables, and then we've got also user-defined code views as well. So I want to look at just like say data model views, and go under here like say accounts payable. We can kind of see the breakdown of our different model views um, where applicable, and then a list of kind of the tables that are, are being related within those views. <clears throat> so, again, we have these across you know all the, the modules, and if you want you know the catalog, we can send that over to you. This just kind of gives you a flavor. Um, this is what's happening on the back end. So this is kind of the first step: is we run these scripts. We basically script it out based on the environments and, and your version of JDE. Uh, we support all versions of JDE world and E1. So this is a solution that, that is not just an E1 type solution. It, it's uh, for all, all customers. Um, and then we basically take our, our, our BI Publisher content and, and, and apply that on top of, of this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to log in here to, uh, to BI Publisher. Um, so I'm going to just log in here. So this is the BI Publisher Enterprise. So when you actually, this would be loaded up on a server and your users would access this over the web. So slightly different than, than OneView reporting where you're, you're pretty much getting at the, the OneView from within a JDE application and building out a report from an inquiry screen or, or um, you know, a business view. This is actually kind of a, a little, it's almost like the third party uh, way to get at it where it's, it's you know, on a dedicated server and then users just access it all over the web. So um, I don't actually have to be in JDE to get to this. I can access it um, from outside the JD Edwards application. So I'm going to go in here. We're going to start by looking at an example. It's like a financial reporting package. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and navigate to this general ledger or general accounting reports folder. And she's open here. So, you know, this is an example of a, um, a sample package. You know, these are some, some sample reports that, that we deliver. Um, but there's a lot of this is really kind of the techniques that we've come up with to build these types of P&Ls and balance sheets because that's something that's kind of unique. Um, there's some, some commonality amongst that. For instance, every balance sheet, for the most part, has, you know, assets equals liability, no one equity, and then assets mostly break down by current assets, you know, non-current assets, you know, liabilities, current, long-term. But other than that, when you get down to the lower levels uh, and granularity of some summary roll-ups, it's every company is a little bit unique. So uh, depending upon whether or not, you know, customers are using account ranges or account category codes or, you know, how they're managing those those different hierarchies of, of the roll-ups, you know, we can address it. So this is actually an example of a few different flavors here. Here we've got a P&L, you know, income statement by company. So we've got at the company level, you know, revenue and the breakdown by object account. If I go ahead and click on the next tab, it's going to give us another flavor. You know, high level rows the same. Now we're seeing revenue instead of broken down by, let's say, object account, now we'll see, in essence, the revenue broken down by, you know, business unit or it could be uh, region or division or business segment. So it's kind of just another way to to, uh, to look at the data. I go ahead and let's take a look at, let's say, like the income statement by business unit as an example. I'll go ahead and uh, zoom in on this. So now we're actually looking at, you know, at, at a point where we're, you know, at a business unit, um, and we're looking at financials at that, that granularity. If we're looking at the business unit the, and the object and the subsidiary, that kind of gives us down to the account detail. And when we're in a report at that level, then we can actually drill down into you know, the underlying transaction detail. So let me go ahead and um, look at a good account to drill into here. So, for instance, if I've got this account here, rent expense, and I've got these $8,000 year-to-date actuals of rent expense, we also know as you know, month-to-date actual budget, prior year, same thing for year to date. Uh, we've got other examples in here, you're doing percentage of sales and other types of calculations as well. But um, if I want to go ahead and look at the details of what makes up this rent expense line, again, this is all just pulling from the summary financial information in JDE, but to get to the detail, we can go ahead and drill into that. In essence, it's passing over and querying the data on the general ledger for that specific account for the time period and everything else. So now we've actually drilled down from summary to the general ledger transaction detail. Um, and at this point, we can go ahead and this, I want to take a, another step deeper here for Allen Supply, the storage unit rental, $800. And here was the invoice associated with that. So to see the details, has, has that check been cut yet or was the discount on that invoice, we can drill into that. It's taking us another layer deeper into the AP invoice. And if we go ahead and drill into the, the purchase order, now we're actually taking us further into looking at the, the open PO side of things as well. So, you know, these are the types of things we're actually linking from one report to another um, where within the, uh, we could also have a hyperlinks that go right back to the JD application. And I think that's typically if you were doing like one view reporting and want to drill down, that's probably the type that you would do. But when you're going with the standalone, you have that ability to kind of create these hyperlinks and drill down type reports across modules. But you're actually calling another report, and it's all your nicely formatted. It's not going back to, I say, the JD application. The other beauty of that is that, let's say, you know, if I'm a, a manager, I don't ever go into JDE, right? I just get my monthly P&L. I can go in there. I can find out where I'm, I'm over, over budget. I drill into it. I answer all my questions on my own. I don't have to worry about getting into the JD application and deal with that. So that's a huge advantage here of, um, of the BI Publisher, uh, standalone versus the one view as an example. Okay. Going across the, the tab, we've got some other flavors of, of income statements. You know, on the far right, we've got a couple balance sheet versions as well. So I'm looking at this, let's say a balance sheet summary. So in this one, we're looking at, you know, kind of a beginning balance, prior period balance, the you know, month to date activity, and then the current balance. And this is just summarized. So we kind of see the, the high level detail here. Uh, but if we want to get the actual account detail within each of these levels, you know, that's kind of where the detail might come in as well. So now when we're actually looking at the detail flavor of this, now you'll see within cash, we've got the breakdown of all those different accounts that roll into that. So if we want to, again, drill just like we drilled in the P&L, we could drill into, you know, an account here as well. It's going to give us that transaction detail. 
um, from the general ledger. Okay. So this is an example of, you know, if you envision, you know, kind of starting to deliver nicely formatted financial reports. Uh, there's a lot of JDR customers today that do everything in Excel um, and, and are manually doing and preparing those month-end reports. This may be a nice way to, to start empowering people and managers to, uh, to kind of get at their own reports. So that was just an example um, on the, the financial side. Let's go ahead and take a look at a, a sales example. So I'm going to go back to my catalog here. We'll go ahead to, to sales. Here we've got, um, we'll start this in, like I said, edit mode. So, and we'll actually go ahead and we'll build a new report from scratch here, and that's what kind of focus a little more time here on the, um, you know, the, that process of actually building something new. Go in here, and um, make this interactive. So you'll notice here that uh, there's a couple different things going on. First off, we've got um, where the result top, the, the, these are almost like kind of parameters, but they're actually referred to in BI Publisher as what are called lists. So you can kind of create these. In this case, we've got you know one by year, year underscore quarter, year underscore month, let's say region, sales rep, um, you know, maybe it's you know product group, subgroup, customer, things like that. So What's nice about this is, you know, you can actually click on one of these. If I want to look at just the sales for Central, I click on Central, you'll notice all the underlying details of this report are now restricted just to Central sales. So we've got, you know, this sales top 10 by customer, sales by product family. Um, we've got a little trend there by month, you know, gross profit. These are the kind of like gross profit trend by month, gross profit. And then we've got, in essence, a table down here. You know, within each region, we can go and, and drill into, you know, the different levels of the report to get down to the detail as well. Okay. So, you know, the other thing that's interactive, let's say we wanted to look at just 2009. Right? We can go ahead and click on 2009. That'll filter that down. If I want to go ahead and remove that filter, I can click on that. If I wanted central and east, I could go ahead and just select both of those, holding down control. Uh, if you wanted to actually, within one of these charts, you're looking at, okay, I want to look at just for Central and East, just Costco. Now you could go ahead from the slicer, but you can also interact from the charts themselves. Just mousing over, you'll see what the values are. If I want to filter down in just 2008 for Costco, I can go ahead and click on that bar. And actually now it's going to trickle everything down. I'm looking at just solely how those dollars break down across the board. Okay. So in a nutshell, that's kind of this is an interactive view. It's something that's also very powerful. Um, so it's it's for some reports. This is the right format to to provide analysts that ability to click around, slice and dice the, the data. Whereas others might be you know, you know the more professional look and feel might be what you're you're getting at. BI yeah, Publisher again it supports uh, you know both types of reports. Um, to build the nicely formatted reports does take um, a little more tedious work. We've come up with some great best practices for that. We've actually built out some templates to really make that process um, you know you know, in a matter of five minutes building out some some of those nicely formatted reports. Um, and if anybody's interested in that, we'd be happy to to schedule another session and kind of get into more depth about, you know, building um, P&Ls and balance sheets and other other professional looking reports. But right now we want to go ahead, let's let's build kind of what you see here on the screen. Let's just start it from scratch and, and build that. So um, the first thing I need to do is let's go back. I'm just go back to the catalog for a second. Um, so you have to have a data model. And so, again, that's kind of the core foundation of each BI publisher standalone report. And in a lot of the, the from the development side of things, building one view reports is, is the same. It uses the same layout editor, which is the tool you'll see in a minute that we're going to use to build the report. But, um, but the starting point is different. So what happens here is you basically have full control to build data models. So you are determining what the source of information you want to, to pull into your report how the relationships are going to take place, what types of, of fields you want, what data you want available. Um, and then, in essence, you've actually, you're creating a model. You're saving it with sample data. We'll do that in a minute. Whereas one view, you're actually going from an inquiry screen or something and, and selecting based on the values that are in the grid, uh, which data you want, and then you build your part from that. So here, I mean, you could have a data model that's pulling in information from sales and inventory and pur purchasing and a little bit of GL activity all within one data model if you want. You know, you can kind of create that. 
Um, whereas one view, you know, you don't have that 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 uh, flexibility. But let's go ahead and build a new report. So when I'm actually just at the web interface here, I'm going to choose new. And when I choose new, you'll see here an option for new report. Okay. When I hit new report, use an existing data model. Again, so the data model has to be already created. Um, it's not something that an end user would do on the fly. Uh, I definitely think that you know, with our, our pre-built data models that you could have analysts and, and, and non-technical IT users that, that could own that, that maintenance of those and, and, and taking what we deliver and, and expand on them. Um, or, and even pretty savvy analysts today build your own new data models. But, um, but typically that may be the one place where getting those, um, you know, if, if new ones need to be created, and that's kind of where there might be a little bit of, of IT involvement in the process. But so let's go down here. I'm going to click on under data models. I'm going to navigate to distribution. And I'll go to procurement. And I'm going to go ahead and let's look at open purchase orders. So I go ahead and click on this data model for open purchase order and hit next. You'll see it was step one of, of three or step one of four. Now, I, if you do guide me, this actually kind of just create one sample table, but I actually want to build the report. From, so I'm going to use the report editor. So I'll choose that and hit finish. Next, it's prompting me, well, where do you want to save the report? So let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and let's save this into uh, open purchase order ad hoc report. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and specify the location I want to save the report and hit save. At that moment, now I've saved that report to that folder, and now it's asking me, okay, do you want to start from a template? So this is kind of where we've also done as part of our solution is built out um, some example templates. You know, in this case, we've got a, a landscape version with the charts and those lists that we saw on the, the example in sales. So by starting from that, you don't have to go ahead and build all the, the tiered layouts and, and everything within the, the canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and let's say I want to give this a title. Open purchase orders. Okay, and then I can go ahead and each list here and just drop from the data model right on top of those lists, and it'll kind of create those those parameterized lists at the top for for filtering sake. Um, let's say we want you know the first one by supplier, so I can go ahead and drag in let's say our supplier there. Maybe we want our company as well. As well. Maybe I want to get say the uh, item and account and description. So what that's doing is. Again, if there's an item associated with the line item of the, the purchase order, then it'll pull the item inf information. Otherwise, it'll pull the, uh, the account description, the object account, um, dynamically. And so we're looking at like the last status here. And maybe it's like, like line type or something. So you know, just give you a flavor of some different things. So we've got those across the top. We've got a few charts, a couple charts here in a pivot table, uh, or cross tab, I should say. So if I go ahead and click on this first chart, this is a pie chart. So we can go ahead and drop, let's say we want to get a breakdown of our open amount. So I'll grab open amount and drag that on top of our drop values here. And then we're going to go ahead and identify the series. We're going to drop that on the drop series over here. So let's say we want to get our open amounts by supplier. So if I go ahead and just drag the supplier name and just drop that right here and drop series here. That will give us the breakdown by supplier. If I click on the chart to the right, this is going to be, let's say, a bar chart. So let's say we want to get the breakdown here by the specific item or account information. We can grab item, account, and description. We'll drag that to our label here. And in this case, rather than looking at amounts, let's take a look at units. So we go down here, units open. Drop that into drop values here. Now we've got a lot of detail here, and as you start clicking around, we'll actually see it filtered. But let's say we're looking at just within this chart, I want this to be like a top 10. So if we go ahead, while that chart is selected, you'll notice here under the chart tab, there's a filter option. I click on the filter. In this case, we can go in here and choose our units open. And We'll go ahead and make this is in top and choose 10. Okay, so now we're looking at just the top 10 for that. And then down here we've got a cross tab. So you can see here we can drop in our rows and columns. And um, you can also use this as just kind of an aggregated table if you don't want to drop any columns in there. 
for a true cross tab type view, which is kind of what we'll do now. So let's say we want to look at, let's say, last status. So we can go ahead and drop that into our dropper rows here. Then we go in and choose within our status. Maybe we want to get the different supplier. And then within each supplier, let's also grab that item in description. And in this case, let's look at amounts and units in our table. So if I go to amount open, we'll drop that over here, drop data here. While that's selected, we can go ahead and format that. Here we'll format those dollars with uh, dollar sign and decimals. And then we'll take our units and drop that to the right of our amounts. And we'll format our units to be with a comma, but no decimals. Okay. So in essence, really what we've done is we've just grabbed the template, started just dragging and dropping items into the canvas, which is kind of, this is the value of the tool. If you kind of set up and, and you know, start with some, some good templates, um, and Oracle delivers a few, you know, we've just kind of taken some of our interactive reports that we built and then, you know, backtracked and said, well, let's go ahead and take some of those templates as starting points, which is what led us to, to this point. So once you've kind of built the report, next thing we need to do is we need to save this layout. So we'll call this, let's say, open PO layout one. Okay. So you could actually create, again, you, you created the one report. Right now we've got one layout, but you could have, like we saw the different tabs in the financial report, you know, you could actually create various layouts for different types of analysis. Um, so that's one of the nice features of, of building out layouts within the report. You're kind of querying the data once, and then you can kind of slice and dice that data across the different tabs. Now we can go ahead here and choose the uh, interactive. And this will actually show us on the fly here. <clears throat> so just like we saw on the um, uh, sales example, you now we'll look at Allen Supplies. So now within Allen Supplies, these are all the uh, open items that we have. Mousing over it tells us what the quantities are. Good into our table here. You can also go ahead and looking at this, let me go ahead and Get back to everything here. If I wanted to go ahead and double click on our, our cross tab here, we could also rename columns and provide more descriptive information here. But if I go ahead and just double click here or click on that table, you'll notice it actually opens up in a separate little window here, the, uh, the, the, the cross tab. So if we want to go ahead right now, we're drilling in within each status to the list of suppliers, to the list of items. But if we want actually to look at maybe the list of suppliers first, we can go ahead and just drag over the, the status. And now within each supplier, we've got the list of the different statuses. And if we wanted items and then status last, we could actually do that as well. Okay. So that just kind of gives you an example um, of some of the, the interactive functionality here. Um, so we want to kind of give you a, a flavor of, of what it's like to build something uh, new. Uh, again, there are some other steps to build those nicely formatted reports where, you know, you have to kind of create more nested tables and, and formatting becomes a, a bigger play where this is really just drag and drop. Um, but this is something that, again, you create it once, you save it, and then you could go back at, um, at any moment and, um, and refresh it and, and update it um, and, you know, with, with the current data. Okay. So the other thing that I wanted to, to show... Go ahead and we'll save this report. Go to uh, let's say catalog here. So if we go back to let's say the general accounting, um, and we open up, you know, the other option that, that I want to point out is you also have the ability to, to schedule these, right? So if I want to go ahead and um, schedule a report, you can click on schedule. Put in what your parameters, so in this case you put in what company, year, whatever parameters you've defined for, from the data model for your report. Choose your output, so maybe in this case I've got, this is, you know, p and you know, by you. You know, choose what layout you want to run. Um, may I want PDF to be my output. You can add some type of destination, you know, um, if you have those set up. Go to the schedule here. By default, we could run this once right now, daily, weekly, monthly, because you can put things on a, on a calendar or schedule if you like as well. Set notification. Uh, when you're done, you can go ahead and hit submit and give this a uh, submission a, a job name. So this is a uh, income statement by business unit. Okay. 
Okay, submitted successfully. Go ahead and we'll choose return. And if we go to the job history, we'll actually see that submission that was just ran. So it actually went out there after that was scheduled, retrieved the data for the parameters that were selected back to the report, and now the users can go ahead and open up the, the package and drill down um, and open up the report. So in essence, that's what we had it pull that specific flavor. So um, that's an example of the scheduling. It's also something that you know you can't do with one view reporting. So you know the, the enterprise, the BI publisher enterprise over the web allows you to, which for a lot of our customers, we've got a lot of construction customers and, and others where you know there's project engineers and project managers that need to basically, you know, don't get into JDE but need to you know want to run their own reports and refresh their own reports. Um, you can also do you know scheduling and bursting out and, and that's another um, value of of the standalone. Okay. So, oh, let me uh, go back in there real quick. Um, we'll look actually look at, uh, just real quick at a couple examples of some data models. So, um, just to kind of give you an idea. So when we actually go in and if I go to the BI Quick Launch and data models, we'll go back to some that we've been working with a little bit here. Let's say like uh, sales is an example. If we go ahead and choose uh, edit here. This is an existing data model. Inside of this, we've kind of already gone in and, and identified the relationship. So it's going, if it needs to, you know, unioning the, the sales detail with the history going out there creating relationships to the address book for the parent and the ship to and sold to and, and bringing the applicable information from that, category codes, things like that. Now you're looking at this probably saying, well, this looks very cryptic. One of the best practices when you're building out data models is to kind of keep your naming conventions uh, very short. So if you go to the structure tab here, you'll notice on the left-hand side we've got this XML tag name. So we kind of kept those to be fairly cryptic. Now, again, that's something that is just taking advantage of the kind of the aliases in the system. Um, but the long names, when any user's building report with this, the name on the right-hand side is what actually what the users would see. So what we've done is we kind of classify fields, DMs for like slice and diceable dimensions, DTs for dates, MS for measures. We've got the long names, what they mean, and then the aliases as well. Okay, so by doing this, by giving the alias um, as the short name of the XML tag name, part of the process I'll show you here in a minute, we have to create the XML data set that's used for the report and that has to be generated every time the report's processed. Um, by using long names for that, that could be extremely large and sometimes even um, you know, fail to complete because it gets too, too bigger than the, the, the file size uh, can handle. So, so that's kind of a, a, a common best practice. You'll notice here on the left, we've got parameters from date through date. So when you build a data model, first you have to kind of set up those relationships. And there's a query uh, wizard that that um, has kind of we've seen some limited success with that. But like I said, we're we package these and um, have workable data models as part of our solution for JD Edwards. But part of you set up the data model with the SQL. Um, there's actually under define the JDBC connectivity under administration. You go back and you'll see, you know, JDBC connections, and that's where you'll go in as your administrators and set that up. So once that's in, let me go back to where it was. So once you're within a data model, um, you'll notice there's a little XML icon, get XML output. So that's what you need to run to get your sample data. In this case, we have a, a date range. Um, we go in here. Let's say we want to run five uh, rows of data. So you can actually pick um, how many rows of sample data. So this is in essence sample data that will be used to build your report. So this is really just for development purposes. Once you publish the report and then the end user, you're going in there and refreshing it and running it on uh, when you open it, it's actually recalling based on the parameter values you enter, re retrieving whatever data set meets that criteria. So this is really just for development purposes. So you can go ahead and just look at 100 rows of data if you want or do all rows of data. Um, there's a small enough data set, you might want to just do you know, all uh, for, for your sample data set for your run. Once you've gone in and come up with the sample data set that you need, then to the right of the return button, you'll see a drop down, and you can go ahead and choose Save as Sample Data. And then what that'll do is um, that's now when you call that data model like we did when we built that OpenPO report, 
that's the data that you'll be used and you'll see it will be visible as you're building out that report. So you want to go ahead and save that. So that's an example um, of the data model. Just another example of one of our sample data model on like the financial side where you'll see uh, we're doing a lot more. So let's take a look here. So in this case, you'll notice, you know, we're doing a lot of calculated objects here for month-to-date actuals, budgets, variants, you know, we're doing a lot of concatenations of object account and descriptions, and so um, to build those summary type, we will call them like row flags to get those P&L and balance sheet type roll-ups. Uh, if you keep scrolling down here, we've got the different buckets, but we've also got, you know, these, again, current year, prior year, actual year-to-date, month-to-date, year, uh, inception-to-date. Um, so, so this is a kind of a flavor of, you know, another model that's got a lot more going on with it. So, depending upon what modules, um, there'll be, be, you know, definitely be very uh, varying uh, data models. Uh, sometimes you'll build data models very unique to a specific report output, and some data models will be used to really support a, a wide variety of, of reports. So, again, these are kind of the data models, and then some of the samples on top of the models, as well as the templates. So, we've come up with some really good templates, which are you know, already defined report layouts with, you know, lists and charts and cross-tabs, others are for those formatted reports, you know, those already designed for you. So that's kind of the Jumpstart package. Um, let me go back to uh, the BI Publisher, or that's the uh, PowerPoint real quick. For our, our maintenance paying customers as well, we also go in and, and deliver, um, it's kind of a J.D. Edwards table inquiry where we, we've kind of gone in and it just helps you mine. So if you're looking for a specific table in the system, you can go ahead and put in the table, give you all the fields, the indexes, the, the associated UDCs, or if you know of an alias, let's say I'm, I know, you know, AN01 is the, the field name, but I, I'm not sure what table it is I'm looking for, you can put in the field name, and it will give us all the tables, you can then kind of mine the data with that. This is a really kind of a utility to help kind of mine the, the data model. Uh, we provide access to that as part of our, our maintenance as well. So, BI Publisher standalone or BI Publisher enterprise, you know, standalone versus one view reporting. Um, so, we kind of broke it out to three different layers here. The first kind of the data layer. So, um, the, what we showed you today was going connecting at the JD data with, with JDBC connectivity. So, you basically, that's your connection to JDE, and then there's data models built using that connection. Whereas the one view reporting at the data, the way that you create, it's, it's still creating a data model. It just, it's a mass from the users. In essence, when you go in with one view reporting and select your field from your grid uh, for your, your one view report, in essence, it's kind of creating an on-the-fly data model for you. Um, so a lot of the working pieces are the same. It's just a matter of, you know, some of that's just automated within the one view reporting. Uh, unfortunately, you are limited to the inquiry screen or the grid and, and just the, the lower portion of that that you see. Those are the fields that you have access to. So, if um, you know, currently the, 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 the development piece of, of both standalone and one view report is the layout editor. That's kind of where you're going to go in, build out, you know, drag and drop, but also create new, you know, charts and tables and, and, and kind of build out the reports. The, uh, and I didn't actually show it to you. Um, if you're interested, like I said, get a more of a, a deeper dive, uh, let, let, me, let us know. We'd be happy to do a one-on-one -on -one session. But the formula creation within the layout editor uh, is really, you know, not that robust at this time. I think it is something I know that is something that Oracle is expanding on. Uh, it may just be a couple releases before it really catches up to some of the other competing products out there. But uh, so since the layout editor doesn't have very robust formula creation, uh, on the, the enterprise side, that's kind of pushed back to the, um, the data model, um, but on the inquiry side, uh, sorry, on the one view side, uh, you don't really have the ability to create create new calculated objects uh, very easily. So if you want to concatenate two fields together in the report, you currently can't do that. In the distribution, so with VI Publisher Enterprise, you know, over the web, that's the interface that people will go build reports as well as view reports and 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 distribute reports. Whereas with the one view, it's kind of through the JD Edwards menu structure. So what are kind of the, I kind of already just alluded to some of these, uh, just to recap those, the data level layer, um, you know, the enterprise, you know, you can build formulas, that there is a formula editor in the data model creator. Um, you can kind of multiple data sources, you can kind of set up 
one data model that has um, not against multiple sources, JD Edwards, non-JD Edwards, or it could also be across JD Edwards modules as well. So you can pull in a data model that has inventory information and purchasing and sales and GL all within you know one model, and then you can relate those within the model. Um, and then to to kind of uh, you know the formatted report templates is also um, another thing that that you can do uh, to build those nicely formatted reports. You you know there's a couple of things that we've done. Um, to make that a lot easier, which unfortunately with OneView you don't you don't have that luxury because your starting point for every report is the same. You kind of can choose uh, one of your templates, but not uh, something that's already kind of have a, has a fair amount of work and development into it. And, and like I said, I didn't show an example of that today, but um, some, this probably sounds very confusing. I apologize for that. The um, the JD data only obviously with one OneView where Enterprise uh, is is you know, supports non JD data. Again, from the development standpoint, they're pretty much the same because they're both using the layout editor. So those steps, once you have your data model created, either way, it's you know the development side is very similar. Um, from a distribu distribution perspective, and you, know, you can access uh, the people outside GD can can get in there, run their own reports over the web, schedule their own reports. As we demonstrated in the, the financial report, you could hyperlink across reports. So going from the the GL income statement down to the, the general ledger transaction, to the AP invoice, to the purchase order. You know, those are all things that are linking one report to another, whereas with one view, um, you know, you can't put in a hyperlink because it's the same, you know, you can put in a URL hyperlink. But, um, you know, and there may be times, I think there are something that Oracle may be working on is uh, ways to call the reports from, um, you know, so there may be ways to, to call it a URL that might run another one view report. Um, I know it's something that was in the works, but I, I hadn't seen it actually working yet. Um, so, you know, you, you know, the other thing about the the BI Publisher standalone or enterprise, uh, it is still free to JD Edwards users uh, if you keep the natural schema. So, if if you're going with the free licenses, you know, we can take our views and configure those in such a way that um, you know that those those uh, keep you within the the framework of the natural schema of JD Edwards. Um, if you're actually going with a standalone and, and want to bring in to the solution non-JDE data as well, um, there's a you know you can actually purchase licenses that are non-JDE uh, specific license of the data publisher as well, which is nice because now you can use something to standardize on across all data sources, not just JDE. Uh, everything we demonstrated today is supported on all all versions of JDE and all database types. So whether not, regardless if you're running World on on DB2 or Enterprise One on you know, Oracle or SQL Server, um, you know, the, it, it's all uh, supported. We support with our, our content, um, all database types that JD Edwards runs on, runs on, as well as all JD Edwards versions. The last thing, again, with the OneView, uh, there is some license um, costs associated with that, um, so that there'll be additional costs that would definitely be a more expensive solution. And then there are some version requirements uh, before OneView becomes an option as well. So, uh, upcoming webinars, and I'll actually go ahead and we'll tackle questions here in a second. The uh, we do have another webinar on Thursday, Microsoft Power Pivot for JD Edwards. Uh, a lot of people don't know what Power Pivot is, but uh, with with Office 2010 and uh, and newer, so with Office 2010, there's a free plugin for Microsoft. You can go to PowerPivot.com. You can download the free plugin um, to uh, Office 2010. We've actually created a jumpstart for that as well. So if you if you do a lot with pivot tables today in Excel, um, or you just do a lot with the Excel in general, or you export from JD reports and, and massage data within the Excel spreadsheet, you know we can automate a lot of that with with Power Pivot connecting right at the raw uh, JD Edwards data as well. So it leverages our same views. So we kind of still apply those views on the data, and then we've got the models we've built with with Power Pivot. So we're going to show you how that that can be accomplished on Thursday. Highly encourage that if you're an Excel user to uh, to attend that session. Um, I think there'll be a survey that if you you know if you're interested in, in signing up for that or um, don't have the information about how to uh, about that webinar, let us know. And then we have uh, next Tuesday, Chris reports and business objects for JD Edwards reporting and BI. Uh, again, you know our company started in 2002 helping JD Edwards customers learn how to write Crystal reports. So you know our first jumpstart package was really around Crystal. And then expanded into the full suite of business objects years later with uh, universes as semantic layer there, and that kind of trickled into you know Oracle BI Publisher as well as the Microsoft stuff. 
Um, and then the, the data warehouse and jumpstart uh, next Thursday, August 29th, um, will be another session for that. So we'd love to see you on those other um, uh, webinars. And uh, let's go ahead and tackle some questions here.